Okay, so if you're watching this later on, this is a live stream and I'll be chatting to people throughout this, but if you are watching later when I'm not actually online, you can just watch this um, anyway, but you won't be able to chat live with me, just so you know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm just going to wait for a few people to come on. Hello, Becky. Look at the state of my desk. <laughs> it is desperate for a clean. Hi, Beth. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Hi, Taran. Just looking at the, uh, the muckiness of my desk. It's got pigment all over it. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Lisette. So I'm just getting prepared for what we need for today. Hello, Sammy. Hi, Pickle. Oh, right then. Let me get you on screen in front of me so I can see everybody's comments. Here we go. Make sure the volume's turned down. I don't want to be listening to myself. <laughs> Who have we got then? Um, hi, Joey. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Danny. <laughs> hi, Charlotte. Right then, um, so I'm going to start off while everyone's coming in just with a little bit of happy mail um, which I received from the wonderful, amazing Kenny. Um, so this turned up a few days ago and um, as usual, as I always am, I was absolutely just stunned because, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, I'm always just so shocked and surprised when things drop through the post that I haven't ordered, <laughs> basically. Oh, hi Harry, nice to have you. Hi April, and sorry by the way if I sound really bummed up, my nose is having one of those days, um, I've just got terrible, terrible nose every few days, I'll just have a full blown cold and then it'll disappear. Hi Janet, hi Stephanie, so yeah, happy mail from the wonderful Kenny, I don't know whether she's going to come on or not, um, but first of all she sent me this set of eight um, Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallic Gel Pens. So these were on my wish list and I've seen so much beautiful work done with these pens and um, I was just thrilled to get them through. So you can see that they are all glittery down the barrel. They're all in different colours but the good thing is, the unusual thing, is that they all have different colours whether they're on white or black paper. So this one is blue but it turns into metallic green when it's on black or the other way around. Um, this one is green and metallic blue, this one's violet and metallic blue, uh, this is black and metallic red, and this is gold and metallic yellow and orange, and this one is silver. So they're absolutely beautiful, and I'm just going to run, just bear with me for a second, while I go and get a little postcard that I coloured with these. I forgot to bring it to the table, just give me one sec. every single colour of the pens on this postcard. Now I'm going to bring it up to you, it's from Vintadrama by Hannah Carlson and I'll just show you in the light these pens, just absolutely beautiful. They sparkle like nothing I've ever seen come out of a gel pen <laughs> and I'm including the Sakura Stardust in that as well. These are definitely more glittery, just beautiful, beautiful pens. So the, the, the Dreamcatchery thing here all around it I don't know whether you can see it looks blue but then it goes green and I think Dev used these on the frame for his green man picture that he just recently completed but you can just see how gorgeous they are so thank you to Kenny for those just check that no one else is oh hi everyone hi everyone that's come in since I've checked the comments hi Karen they are hybrid dual metallic so I think they're Pentel um, and that's what they're called, dual metallic. And I think they only come in eight colours, but obviously some of them are double colours, so you're getting maybe 16 or most colours out of them. So that was the first bit, and then these showed up. So once I picked myself up off the floor um, and realised 
that these have been sent um, from one of you beautiful subscribers, I was literally shaking and I'm not saying that to sound over dramatic or anything I really was holding these just looking at them shaking um because I know how expensive they are I know how good quality they are and just um yeah so Kenny thank you once again these are the 60 pit pastel pencils and as far as I know these this is the maximum set um that you can get so I'm just going to have a quick look at them so I'm going to open this up. We've got a beautiful, very high quality metal tin. And then a few bits and bobs, little leaflets telling you how to use them and things. And then here are the pencils themselves. So they've got this wood casing. So they're quite unusual for Faber-Castell because they usually have like a lacquered casing. But this is wood. It looks just, just stunning. They're really light to hold as well. Um... It's got the pit pastel name on it. It's got a barcode. It's got a colour name, uh, sorry, colour number, but no colour name. But I'm guessing that these might match up to some polychromos numbers. So we can probably get colour names that way. But if I just take this out, you can see that there is a second layer with all of the browns and ochres and um, just beautiful, beautiful colours. Now, I have never used pastel pencils. Once I got a scrawler box, which is like a subscription box for colouring, and I received a pastel sharpener in it. So that's going to go really well, hopefully, with these. It would be good if I could put it in there, wouldn't it? Um, but I'm going to need your help. So if you have used pastel pencils, please, please let me know of any good techniques or anything that I can use with these. Because I just don't know where to start. I know that they're going to smudge everywhere, so I'm going to need some kind of fixative. Um, and I can imagine them being really soft and crumbly, so I'm going to have to watch out for that as well. But yes, I was over the moon, just over the moon, honestly. So Kenny, if you come on later, thank you, thank you so much. I've already spoken to you privately, but thank you again. Um, you know how much I appreciate it. Yeah, they are, they're beautiful. Oh, did she? I'm going to have to check May's stream then. I'll definitely do that. Hairspray for fixative. Yes, you can use hairspray, but I have actually got, let me just show you, I have actually got this stuff, which is a pastel fixative, and um, it's it's meant for that kind of thing. I think it smells a bit though, so I'd have to do it outside, but yeah, hairspray is another good one. Okay, so moving on to today's stream. We'll be probably doing something with these in a later video, when I've had a bit of a go with them and I know what I'm doing. We might swatch them as well, maybe. But what I'm going to do today, as you'll have seen by the title, is I'm going to be swatching these beautiful pencils called the Museum Aquarelle by Caran d'Ache. Now, I bought these from, I got these from Cult Pens. Um, they are a UK-based um, pen and pencil and art supply um, company, but they do post worldwide. So I'll be giving the link in the description for these and I'll be doing a proper review on these as well, sort of in the future. Um, but this just tonight on the live is swatching with me again because I know you enjoy swatching videos. And this is the first time I'll have actually used them. So just quickly, um, in the box. Oh, is she? Oh, no, she is. She's just a wonderful, wonderful person. I hope she feels better soon. So... Inside the box, underneath the lid, you've got this kind of foam, a very dense, thick foam, and that protects the pencils. And you'll also find this kind of thing in the luminance box as well. Very, very well-made packaging, and um, they better be as well for the price, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, we've got the leaflet inside. Oh, Sabrina, there you are. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Hi, Nana. I hope everybody's well. I hope you're well, Sabrina. Um, thank you for that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see kind of close up what we're dealing with here. Um, so I've got a luminance pencil in front of me just to show you the difference. Because obviously they're both made by Caran d'Ache, but they are very, very different looking. Um, so your luminance is completely round. It's got the wooden casing. It's got the dipped ends and it's really nice and thick. And it's got the silver lettering, whereas these museum aquarelles, you would never, you know, not be able to tell these apart because they're completely different. 
the aquarelles are really thick. They feel to me holding them like possibly the thickest aqua pencil I've used. They are really super thick. I'll have to, when I do the review, I'll find out the millimetres and stuff. But I would say it's at least a four to four and a half millimetre core, if not more. It is large. I think, yeah, it's, I think it's, it looks to be thicker than the luminance, but it might not be. It could just be my eyes. Um, so, yes, the Museum Aquarelle, it's got the silver writing on it. We've got a dipped end, but it's all matte. It's not glossy. And it's got the name of the colour so we've got purplish red on this one we've got the light fast rating which is five stars and a barcode and a little paintbrush to show that you use water with them and that's about it but they just i mean just looking at them in the box they're amazing aren't they just to look at um so i'm gonna lift the lid and without any of these falling out hopefully <laughs> show you the back also has that very dense foam on there as well to protect every single layer of pencils so they really have used quality production okay so pulling out the next layer with our third and final layer it also comes with two technolo pencils which i think are graphite yes yeah, so this one's a 3b and this one's a hb so you're getting two graphite pencils with it as well and what can you say it's it's just to look at you, you just don't really want to use them because they just look so beautiful um hi everybody that's joined so we're going to pop these back for now and we're going to get swatching so has anybody used these museum aquarels what do you think of them are they on your wish list um let me know so i'm in my swatch book now i'm on to the last page so I'm going to have to get a new one, but hopefully these will all fit. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I am a massive enabler, I know. It's bad, but it's so good. Right, hi Loretta. So I've already done a little grid here from the last stream when I got it wrong. I got the wrong page. So let me just move the pencils out the way in a sec. And I will be sharpening them a little bit as well, because we usually we're supposed to sharpen pencils before we use them, aren't we? Uh <laughs> right so I'm going to do the grid I should have done this first really but it gives us more time to chat doesn't it so I hope everyone is having a nice week so far it was really really warm here um, last week and then it's gone really cold again so I'm sat in my back room I've not set the fire up because I was rushing so I am um, I am quite cold at the moment <laughs> but you know this is what you do things you do for your craft just stay freezing um so i'm going to do the grid exactly the same or near as damn it and you can tell me <laughs> what oh cheers sammy <laughs> it's so hard though isn't it you know when you see because i see loads of stuff on your channel on other people's channels i mean deb's got the biggest collection of art supplies ever and um you just you just want it all i don't think there's ever enough is there um, it's like um, that song in The Greatest Showman should be written about colour and supplies. <laughs> so my lines are getting a little bit narrow now. I've got to concentrate. Hi, Marina. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I've heard that they're, they're like the best watercolour pencils you can buy. And obviously you've got Caran d'Ache Super Colour, which are like a step down from the museums which are really good anyway. So I'm really excited to see how these work because I've not tried them at all yet. This is the first time I'm, I'm having a go. Um, but yeah, the, the museums are supposed to be their top grade watercolour pencil. I think they're like the luminance of watercolour pencils. So hopefully they'll be good. I think they are quite expensive. I can't remember exactly how much they were now, um, but they are quite expensive. But when you when it comes to Caran Dash, you kind of expect that because everything they put out is just the best, the top, the highest quality. So um, it really is a case of you get what you pay for sometimes. So I'm going to finish off that grid. I'm going to do 
do the lines down. Sorry about this. This is like a really boring bit that I should have done before I came on stream, I guess. I could have done it while I was watching Sammy. Um, but you're just going to have to bear with me. If anyone um, wasn't on Sammy's stream, by the way, you need to go back and watch it because she's coloured the most beautiful jellyfish out of the Imagimorphia book. Um, and they're just gorgeous. So um, my lines aren't straight at all. But anyway... Uh, the Albrecht Jura. I don't know actually, but that's a really good question because they're they're the kind of top grade watercolor pencils, aren't they, Albrecht Jura from Faber Castell? So that would actually be a really good idea for a video to do some sort of comparison between the the top grade um, water soluble pencils. I'm guessing if these are anything like the quality of the luminance, which I think they must be, we're gonna we're gonna experience something amazing here tonight. I usually only work with the ink tents, which obviously they're not watercolours, they're ink, but it's kind of the same thing in my eyes. You know, I know that they have different properties and stuff, but when I say watercolour pencils, I often include Derwent ink tents in that. Um, just because they're, they're the pencils that I use most that are water soluble because they're the brightest. So really, I'm hoping that these museum pencils will be like a good alternative to the ink tents when I want a pencil that can be reworked and it's not as permanent as the ink tents, but it's still got that really bright, vibrant colour. The Albrecht Jura are lovely, they're lovely pencils, I just don't know whether these are going to be better because like I say there's, there's just never enough colouring supplies is there. Okay so nearly there guys, we are getting there, just bear with me. Okay, so I've swatched out my grid. Hopefully that's going to be enough. I can't be bothered to count them, but we will soon see. Um, and here we go. So I should have left a space for the title there. So I'm going to discount that top one and we're going to get straight into it. So here we go. Put these to the side. And as I say, I'm going to sharpen them a little bit first as well. So I'm going to skip the white one for now and then we'll do... We'll do a black paper test on that at the end. And we'll move straight on to this one here, which is number 242, and it's called Primrose. But they spelt it Primrose or Prime Rose, which is not the way that I spell it. So I'm going to sharpen this up. Just doing a couple of rounds of the sharpener just to get off any debris or anything that's covering the pencil that you would have on the production line sometimes there's little bits of wax or a kind of residue that's on there so it's always best to sharpen it even just a little before you get started um i'm gonna need a water brush i think this has got a bit of water in it so that was lucky <laughs> i'm not very good at preparing for videos am i um this sharpener i get asked this this is the most asked question ever what sharpener do you use and this is the swordfish manual hand crank sharpener um i first knew about it from watching sammy's videos actually so um thank you to sammy for that because it's an amazing sharpener i usually have my electric one but i haven't got that plugged in at the moment i've got my phone plugged in so hopefully it won't go off um but let's go so this is primrose i'm going to do the white at the end as i said so we'll start off with this one My handwriting is atrocious. Let's zoom in a little. So I'm going to just colour half of the, the block in and then we'll drag out the rest with the water and see how they dissolve. Oh, thank you, Mia. So obviously with these really light colours, you're not going to be able to see too much going on. Um, it's quite difficult to me, for me to see it actually as well because it is so light. But I can tell you that that has just dissolved immediately um, without too much water at all. So off to a good start, but we need to get into the darker colours so we can really see these work. 
So this one is Lemon Yellow. Oh, I've got to sharpen it. You're going to have to remind me because I'll forget. So just literally going to do one turn. Oh, it's not in properly. These are so thick, it actually is finding it difficult to go into my sharpener. So that's that's a good point. If your sharpener's not got jewel holes, look at this. Oh, I don't want to ruin these pencils. I'm so scared of ruining them. Um, but yeah, they're really fat, really fat pencils. So sometimes with water-soluble pencils, they don't really contain a lot of pigment. And then you, you kind of put the water to them and they look very wishy-washy and very light. But these straight away, you can see with this yellow, hopefully, it's just packed. It's packed with pigment. I've not even had to barely touch the paper with it. You know, I've not done any hard pressure or anything like that. And um, they look really, really good. So I'm just going to take the water out. And yeah, just completely covered it instantly, basically. So fantastic. I can't wait to actually use these on some, uh, some colouring books. You know what I'm going to do? I can't bring my other sharpener in here because I haven't got an extra plug. I'm going to have to... I don't think the pastel sharpener will work, will it? You'd think I'd have more sharpeners, wouldn't you, really? Um, I'm just going to have to go with it for now and not sharpen it because I don't want them getting ruined inside this sharpener because the hole's just not big enough. That's what he said. <laughs> okay, so the next one is yellow. Just simply yellow, there you go. Oh, that is beautiful. This is like a sunflower yellow, it's absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, you barely have to touch your water to it and it just melts, it melts away. This is called the golden yellow. sorry about that sometimes it just slips out Brunch. right okay this is golden yellow again just beautiful depth of color gorgeous pigment no not yet I've literally just started so you've not missed anything okay so here we go just look it just takes it just takes the pigment straight away you don't have to work it or anything I mean, if you wanted to sort of soften up the line between the dry pencil and the water, you can just do a little bit of a flick over it and it just merges it all together. This next one is Gold Cadmium Yellow. Don't know if I can fit this on. And uh, yes, yeah, so. So these yellows are just getting deeper and deeper every time and we're moving into orange territory now. And these really, I mean, with a lot of watercolour pencils, you'll find that you can't really use them dry because they're either too sticky, they've got a really sticky consistency like the ink tents, um, or they just aren't pigmented enough to use dry and they only really get more vibrant as you add the water but these could easily just be used dry rather than having to add water every single time. Um, this one's saffron. Hi Lulu. So this one looks like the orange glaze that you would get in the polychromos. water coming out my brush now I've got to make sure I don't squeeze it too much might just have to ignore that swatch because loads of water just came up then and ruined it this 
this is the orange, so just basic orange. So all of these so far, I think, oh hang on, there was one, hang on, let me just check. So there were two so far that are four stars out of five for Lightfast, but most of them have been five stars so far. They are, they are so creamy, honestly. Like I said, you could just use them. They feel like Prismacolor. You could just use them dry. It's really versatile in that way. If you want to colour a page but not add water, or you want to keep the same colour as you go along the page, but you want to add water to maybe the background or something to make it easier to colour, you could do that with these pencils. You could do either. Oh, bye, Charlotte. Yeah, you could do. You could mix ink tents because they're permanent, so. Oh, April, they're amazing. They really are. Uh, this is Cornelian. Just so soft, really, really soft pencils. When you add the water, it kind of thickens it. It, it just, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just really packed full of colour. You know, as soon as you touch it, yeah, just ignore that saffron there because I, I, just way too much water came out of the brush and it's just bleached it completely. It's not the pencil's fault, it's mine. <laughs> um, Nana, I would have to say these um, just purely because they are incredibly pigmented. That's all I can say. This is light cadmium red. Obviously, budget is an issue, you know what I mean? Um, super colours, there's absolutely nothing wrong with those at all. They're gorgeous pencils. But, oh wow, this pigment is just sliding off this pencil. I'm not even using any pressure. Um, they're gorgeous pencils, the super colours. But I do think that these have the edge. I can just imagine how long these are going to last. If this is the kind of pigment coverage that you're getting just by barely touching the pencil to the paper, these are going to be massively long-lasting. And I believe they're open stock as well. So you can always replace any heavily used pencils without having to buy the whole set. I'm not sure if you can mix them with watercolour paint actually, I don't know. I'll have to find out. So next up is, this one's a three star for light fast. So this is Vermilion. Oh, another just so creamy. I can't, I need to think of more words to describe pencils. They're creamy. They lay down like without even touching the paper, basically. Just gorgeous. You can kind of feel the quality as in, you know that there's not a lot of binder in there. So, you know, really cheap pencils, your Crayolas, kids pencils, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of binder in there and not very much pigment, which is why the coverage isn't great. But you can tell with pencils of this calibre that there is a lot more pigment in there than there are binders. Um, this is Scarlet. Very buttery, yes. Some of them, I would say, are slightly more buttery than others. The reds so far have been really, really, um, what's the word, you know, where they just melt. They, there's, there's a lot of pigment coming off them. But I think you get that in any pencil sets, to be fair. A lot of them vary, and that's because the pigment itself um, can just act quite difficult sometimes. So I don't know what it is, if it's the, is it the blues or something? It's one of the colours is, is less um, easy to put down on the paper if that makes sense but just purely because of the type of pigment that it is
This one's purplish red. This is a lovely colour. It's kind of like, it's kind of like mulberry in the Prismas. They are, they're beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So the Prismas, um, there's a couple of pencils that are just a nightmare to lay down. One of them being electric blue. That's just quite difficult. Um, China blue as well on mine. Um, that's quite difficult. There's a couple of others. Um, so this is Crimson Aubergine. Just, I just want to try something a sec. I just want to, I just want to fill the whole box because I, I know it looks a bit weird on camera when you don't fill the whole box and it looks a bit iffy. So I'm just going to do that so you can see the coverage of the entire thing. Obviously I'll leave the saffron out because that just went wrong. I will, I'll move it up in a sec. Getting near the end of the page now. Okay, just do these two. So as I say, these do work like standard watercolour pencils in that you can rework them when they're dry. They're not permanent, so depending on what kind of artwork you're doing and if you need them to be reworked, that's a really good thing. So Crimson Aubergine. I think a really good pencil test for watercolour pencils would be to see how long the pigment lasts for on the paper when you're brushing it with water, if that makes sense. Kind of like what um, Jennifer Stay does at Colouring Pages Bliss. She kind of measures and methodically and mathematically measures how... Um, how much pigment is in a pencil and things by how sort of far it goes along the paper. I don't know whether you've seen her videos, but she does that. She's done that with um, blending solution on standard pencils. I think it'd be a really good idea to try it with watercolour pencils and just see when you put water to it with a very slight bit of pigment, how how much pigment is in it by doing that kind of, uh, that kind of test. She might have done that already, I don't know. So move up a little bit. We've got Dark Plum. Hi, how are you? Yeah, Jennifer's amazing. So dark plum really is dark. It's kind of like black raspberry from the Prismas. Do you know how, you see how I just convert everything back to Prismas? Because I'm so, I could probably colour match Prismas doing a blind test. Because I just, I just, uh, I'm really kind of adept with the Prismacolor um, pigments now. Uh, dark plum, yeah, know that already. Let's get some water on it. Wow. You know, it's amazing when you've got these darker colours when you add water to it and they just turn into something completely different. Gorgeous. Gorgeous colour. Yeah, I am. I am a Prismaholic. And proud. <laughs> right, what have we got here? We have Carmine Lake. See, that looks so dark. The end of it is brown, so I'm really eager to see how that looks. Carmine Lake. So once I've done the stream, I'll leave some links in the description um, of where I got them from. 
where you can get them if you want to buy them. If you want to save up for them, if you want to put them on your wish list. Um, but they really are worth it and I can tell you that sort of off the bat. Just packed, packed full of pigment. I've never known watercolour pencils to be as intense as this without them being the ink tents, which of course are not watercolour. So, as I said earlier, I think it's really nice to have a pencil as versatile as that and as vibrant as that. Okay, so next up is Violet. So this one has, I don't know if you can see, it's got a residue on it. It's a wax, a bit of wax residue. It's actually coming off on my fingernail. So I would have liked to have sharpened that really first. Let's see if I can get it in the sharpener. No, I can't. I'm pushing it and I don't wanna, I don't wanna like rip the edge of the pencil, but we'll just do our best um, with this one. But really, you should sharpen them all when you first get them. Yeah, this one's really hard. You can't, you can't really feel the pigment coming off that very well at all. Let me just try. Let me try that pastel sharpener. I've no idea if it's meant to. Oh God. If it's meant to sharpen, no, no, it isn't. Look at the state of that. Right, hang on. Shouldn't have done that, but at least we've got the wax off. It's a very light colour this is as well. Let's see what happens with the water. Yes, they are the Museum Aquarelle. So let's see what happens. So immediately the water has made them more vivid, but I definitely think that that wax coating we had then did not help. it's okay it's okay it's very light color anyway I think oh, I haven't got that one Sammy I haven't got the M&R uh, periwinkle blue okay I'm right down to the bottom of the page now <laughs> periwinkle blue okay Are they really? I'm sure that they were cheaper on cult pens when I got them. I'll have to check because prices just go up and down all the time, don't they? So this periwinkle blue, I don't know what colour periwinkle blue is supposed to be. The periwinkle in the Prismas is certainly not a purple like this. It's more of a blue, but this is definitely a purple. So... I think the purples are the pigments that they have the most trouble with getting them light fast, aren't they? That could also mean that they're the most troubling ones when it comes to um, kind of the, the depth of the pigment. I know that there are certain pigments that don't, but... So this is manganese violet, right down at the bottom now. I find it really hard to write when you get to the bottom. Manganese violet. Oh. Okie dokie, right. Um, so this one is quite true to the colour that I know for manganese violet from the uh, polychromos. So that's good. Yeah, it definitely is a faster medium, for sure. But I use them mainly for... Uh, backgrounds because you can just get that that wash kind of effect really really quickly on a large area so there's manganese violet moving to the top of the book now and our next color is gosh we're only on the first tray <laughs> better hurry up uh, ultramarine violet Yeah, they, they're gorgeous colours, aren't they? Hi, May, we are just talking about you. We were um, saying how you did a video with pastel pencils the other day. And I got some happy mail from the gorgeous Kenny. 
which I showed at the start, which is these um, pit pastel pencils, and I have no clue how to use them. So I'm really, um, I'm really in need of your help there, May. If you don't mind. Oh my goodness. So the prices went up quite a lot in Germany then, or was that just, um, was that just on Amazon, or was it across the board everywhere? So here we go, ultramarine violet. A very, very light violet, this one. Very delicate colour. It's how I'd imagine a deco purple to look if that existed. Very light. <clears throat> Next up we've got Cobalt Blue 5%. Uh, cobalt. Five percent. Okay. Yeah, isn't it funny though? Because Amazon are usually cheaper than everywhere else, aren't they? That's that's weird. We were talking about that earlier, Penny. I'm not sure to be honest. I I do prefer these already because I just think that they're just packed with with pigment, and you don't really have to work hard on the page. The reds are really saturated with pigment. There's a couple of other pencils in here that aren't as packed, but um. I think that they're just light colours anyway, so you're not, you can't expect a darker, kind of heavier look of, of a really delicate colour. So I quite like that they've got these very toned down pastel kind of colours in there as well. Okay, this one is light blue. Oh, they're easy to use then, May. That's good. That's right. Oh, this is lovely. This one just came straight off the pencil. Picking colours is hard. I know exactly what you mean. I sometimes, I mean, I'm not really a planner with my colouring pages. I just kind of go for it and see what happens. But I know it is hard. That's why, um, I don't know whether you saw my video the other day. I was using the colour catalogue to um, pick my palette for me, and that really helped. I think my water's running out in my uh, aqua brush. I'll have to go and top that up in a minute. This is a gorgeous blue. Right, just bear with me a sec while I just go and fill up my brush. Okay, it's all full up now. Hopefully this should last us. Okay, I'm just putting my little brush back together. Okay, so that was light blue. Now we've got genuine cobalt blue. Interesting. Did everyone see my video that I uploaded earlier on today? Um, different paints, comparing different paints. Oh my goodness, was I out of my depth or what? I didn't know what I was talking about, to be honest. <laughs> I think that might have came across. But uh, I did try as a non-professional, very amateur beginner to paint. Um, I've already been corrected a little bit in the comments on some of the things, but uh, I'll leave it to the professionals, I think, next time. Um, yeah, it must do. <laughs> Genuine and fake. Um, the colour catalogue. So if you go onto my, not my last video that I uploaded, the video before, I think it's called, I used a colour catalogue to pick my colours or something like that. Um, you'll see what it is. I actually did a, a colouring project with it. That's a gorgeous colour. Um, 
and I've also done a video previous to that which was last year kind of middle of last year which explained what the colour catalogue is and it's basically this file this pdf and it's interactive so this um this wonderful lady called Sarah Renee Clark who creates loads of different colouring pages made this resource and it's interactive like I say so you can click on different keywords you can click on different themes you can click different colours and it will bring up loads of different colour palettes for you to use with all the hex values the colour name numbers everything like that it's just fantastic uh, this is middle cobalt blue so yeah go and look for those videos all the links will be in the description of where you can go and buy the colour catalogue if you want but it's 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 amazing i love it i'm going to be doing more of those kinds of videos where i have to stick to a limited palette that's chosen from that catalogue so i hope you enjoyed that one because I'm going to be doing more. What do you think of the museums, May? Okay. So these blues are actually lovely. You can just, you can see how far they spread. You know, you can see the amount of pigment you're getting. These aren't your uh, pound shop watercolours, that's for sure. Um, dark ultramarine. Oh really? Oh well I'm glad to have you. Thank you for subscribing. Every single time my subscriber count goes up or I get a new like or a new comment, um, it makes me so happy. Like literally every time. And I'll always leave a heart on your comment so that you know I've seen it because I read them all. I'm coming up on 20,000 subscribers now guys. I want to do something special to celebrate it but I don't know what yet. My son said I should do a 20,000 subscriber special, but I've no idea what that means. So um, <laughs> I'm going to have to do some research, I think. Uh, this one is night blue. Um, okay. Oh yeah, this is really nice kind of indigo colour. Can't wait to use these on a colouring book. Which book should I colour with these? Maybe something from World of Flowers? Oh, April, start one, please. I'll be your first subscriber. <laughs> loads and loads of pigment in that one, wow. They're all really pigmented, but then you get a few that are just... It's like, I don't know, it's like there's no binder in there or anything. It's just literal pigment, like the Neo colours. I think Karan Dash, I think they do the most, the best quality supplies, don't they? I mean, I know you've got polychromos, which are amazing. Prismas aren't really great production quality, but they're great pencils. But I think Karan Dash, you've got the Neo colours, the Super colours, the Luminance and these. I think they've got to be like the, the best brand, I think, in my opinion. Oh, we're moving on to the second layer. Okay, here we go. So this is blues and greens now, guys. What you've been waiting for. Oh, good. Yeah, they do. They melt really fast. Right then. So next up is... Was I your first on Insta as well? Oh, this is Prussian blue. Or do you call it Prussian blue or Prussian blue? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I could do Mysteria. Mysteria. Oh, that, that means I've got to colour skin with watercolours. That's scary. Um, Prussian blue. Oh, it's Prussian. Oh, good. I'm saying it right then for once. <laughs> Usually I'm saying it wrong. Like if there's a 50-50 chance of anything, I'll, I'll always pick the wrong one. Always. So this is even darker than the night blue. This is this is more of an, uh, an indigo, I think. It 
it's so nice when you get these these kind of um, this kind of quality with watercolors because it almost feels like you are using thick paints. You know, sometimes, especially the ones that are really full of pigment like this, it goes so thick. A male tell you some of them that they lay down just incredibly thick. It feels really dense, like you are using paint. Oh, bye, Penny. This one's permanent blue. Yeah, so do watch out for an actual proper review of these pencils. This is just me swatching them off the cuff. I'm going to, you know, find out all of the technical info that you want to know, um, thickness and stuff like that. Um, and I'll be putting that in a proper review. Oh, this is super creamy. But this really helps, I think, to swatch them out first before I do the review, because I can tell you how I feel like they act and perform on the paper. Um, rather than just reading off, you know, what it says on the uh, description. Look at that. That's a beautiful, beautiful blue. Need to move it up a bit. Do you know what, April? And I've discussed this before. I think we talked about it on my last live stream, actually. Um... I am a massive, massive sufferer of anxiety. Massive. Um, doing these videos, especially doing the live videos, I am just on edge the entire time. I know it might not sound like it all the time, but I'm always so worried that I'll say something stupid or um, just sound stupid or, or lose my words, you know. But I just do it anyway because you have to. You have to try and push yourself, really, and not let it beat you. But honestly, if I can do it, you can because... Hang on, how the hell do I spell this? No. Okay, help. Talocyanine? I don't know. P-H-T-H-A-L-O Cyanine. Is there any need for these colour names? Seriously. Uh... Yeah, they do, don't they, May? That's what, that's the kind of what I was trying to say. Because the, the Neos are made up of just pure pigment, aren't they? And it feels, some of these feel exactly the same. So that's, that's a really interesting point. You've, you've put into words what I was thinking. So this, the tallow, tallow, tallow cyanine. This is gorgeous. This is like a beautiful. Oh my goodness! You you won't believe. You know you know if you do get some of these, or even just get one or two pencils open stock just to try them because they're blimmin' amazing. That really does feel like neo color using using that one. This is turquoise blue. Forgot I'd spell blue then. <laughs> right. Honestly, April, every, everybody that I've met in, in the colouring YouTube world is so supportive. You know, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be professional or an artist or know what you're talking about. Some people just love company. Just like, you know, I love company. So don't worry about being whatever it is you're worried about. I think these blues are my favourite out of this whole set. They just melt in so nice. Now I've not heard of that blue house. I'll have to check it out. Thank you, Mia. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Denise. This one is ice blue. I was going to say blue glazier because that's the uh, name in French, I think. Is it French or is it Swiss? It's Swiss a language. I've, I get confused. It is. No, it's not, is it? I don't know. Help. Ice blue. I got told off once for saying for saying something was a language and it wasn't. Uh, ice blue. No problem, Rachel. How are you doing, lovely? This is going to be good. I can tell you now. This is super soft. Yeah, definitely. 
early April, that's all I'm doing. This is my iPhone and it's balanced on the edge of a, a shelf above me. You do not have to have like an amazing setup. Oh, I'm moving on to the next colour without even doing this one. I don't know, Sammy. Swiss. Swiss. If you live in Sweden, are you Swedish or Swiss? Or is it completely different? Is Swiss Austrian? Oh my goodness. You know what I'm like with my blooming geography. I've been through this before. Look at this. Look at this. It's almost opaque. That's how good it is. So this is called Beryl Green. Beryl, so never heard of that name for a colour before. But it looks beautiful on the end. Swiss is Switzerland. So, oh yeah, of course. Sweden and Switzerland are different, aren't they? <laughs> English, English from GB, Swiss is Switzerland. Right. Still slightly confused. But I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll get it one day. Probably won't, but. This is a really nice colour. This is like parrot green. Switzerland is a country and they speak French, German, Italian and Romance and Swiss German. It's Swiss German. Oh my goodness. I really need to like brush up and find out. Well, look at this colour. I think if anything, if, if nothing else, I'll be using the blues and greens out of these like, you know, all the time because this is just astounding oh Sabrina thank you oh you're so welcome I love all your Instagram stuff honestly I do I love it I love I love seeing it pop up thank you so so much oh my goodness Rachel you made my day why are you ask I won this set and you be brand new for now that is amazing that is amazing well done thank you sabrina thank you for that oh light malachite green there we go i've got to move up a little bit otherwise i'm going to cut you off so this is like a lighter version of the one we just put down, the beryl green. And it looks to me like a light aqua, if I'm going to do my prisma comparison. I can do a prisma comparison pretty much straight out of my head. That's got to be a talent, surely. Should I go on Britain's Got Talent? So what is your talent, Claire? Well, I can look at a colour and tell you what colour it is in prisma colours. Winner, winner, gold buzzer, woo! Doubtful. Right. I like my cat green again very very thick paint you can only call it paint coming out of these pencils oh cheers april who's gonna vote for me on britain's got talent uh cobalt green can you imagine simon cowell's face cobalt green See, now I'm looking at this. This is more of a parrot green, I think. And that one's kind of more aquamarine. Honestly, if you want to find paint in a pencil, these are just, just amazing. I can see why they are so expensive, even though, you know, it's a crazy price to pay for pencils. I can see why, because I think they've used the maximum quality pigments and the maximum amount of pigments in a pencil. Um, chromium ox, look how they spell oxide with a Y. I've never seen it spelt like that before. <laughs> yeah, the barrel green's gorgeous, isn't it? You bet. Hang on, you bet. I'm sure I've heard of that before. What was that? What was that about, Sue? You have to tell me. I'm sure I've heard of it, though. Yeah, I'll paint Simon a happy face. I'll colour him in. Chromium. 
there's no need for these long what these long names is there to be fair chromium oxide with a y green <clears throat> oh i feel you loretta i'm in my porter cabin at the back again that's absolutely shockingly freezing and i keep forgetting to wheel the fire in before i start my streams it's my fault really Any way of making a porter cabin warmer? There's a question. Insulation of some sort, obviously, but. Right. This is sort of like apple green. Or maybe Kelly green. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to pick out like any of your favorite colors, um, from this and then buy them open stock that that'd be wonderful because you're supplementing your color selection already and you're also trying these pencils out without forking out like 200 quid or whatever they are so definite good idea this is olive yellow matthew kelly here's stars in the rise so he did you bet as well i'm sure i've seen it you know i'll have to go on youtube and check it out right olive yellow Hi Shannon. Uh, look at my hand, getting my painted hand again that I usually get because I just don't use kitchen roll or a piece of scrap paper like normal colourists do. This one's really nice as well. I can feel it when I put the pigment down that it's going to be thick. Look, it just stays the same opacity even when you add the water, that's how thick it is. Stars in their eyes should be bought back. Didn't they tried to do it with um, Harry Hill and it was just atrocious. Um, olive yellow. Then there is. Bye, Charlotte. Thanks for joining. Uh, spring green. Just mind my handwriting, guys. It's awful. Yeah, this is pretty much the same as the spring green in the prismas. There's a little bit of, you know that thing when you get a darker bit inside the lead and it kind of creates dark lines, that's what's happening here. Not too bad though, I mean they'll just wash out when I put the water on but. There we go, we finished one page. Let me go on to the next one. Okay, next is light olive 40%. So what's everybody been up to lately? I've been doing a lot of my diamond painting. Um, the one that I showed on my last diamond painting video with I did the unboxing. Um, I've been doing a lot of that while I've been sat watching Supernatural. Um, so that's taken up quite a lot of time and it's it's almost done actually i've got another row to do and then i'm finished i know right so i started diamond painting when was it i think i got my first one just after christmas my elvis one no i didn't i lie um, I started before Christmas because I did my mum a diamond painting of um, the, the um, of Santa uh, flying over this town. That was quite a small one though. And then I got my first proper real big one af just after Christmas, my Elvis one. But yeah, everyone's doing it, aren't they? It's fantastic. Bright green. It's something different, you know, and especially if you don't frame your colour in, because I don't usually frame mine, I should do really. Um, but with diamond paintings, you kind of do them to frame, you do them to be a piece of artwork in your home that you've created. Um, and they're so sparkly and just fantastic, really. It, it's basically glorified pixel art, that's all it is, but they look amazing when they're done. Vent drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your latest one um, with the eyes, the eyeballs. That was uh, that was some crazy stuff. What's going on? You have to fill me in. 
uh, bright green. Yeah, sometimes if you've got cats or whatnot and they're always climbing around and stuff, you might find little bits of their fur on the edge of the diamond painting. But as long as you keep all the adhesive bits covered in between, you know, you, you having a session on it, you'll be fine. Oh, I didn't know she did an online course, um, Rachel. I'll have to check that out. I've got her book, colouring, um, what was it called? Colour Workshop. This is grass green. <laughs> See, you'd think that, you'd think that, but it actually is really fun and it's really relaxing as well. It's just something different to colouring, you know, sometimes you can get a bit a bit maxed out with colouring and you want something different to do with it's just as creative and even though you've got the pattern there and you're not choosing the colours or anything like that, it's still occupying your mind with something, um, especially if you do suffer from depression and anxiety like me. Uh, you need something to distract yourself from your thoughts, like basically all the time. And uh, that does that, definitely. Uh, emerald green. That's good though, Sabrina, to get your emotions out there. You know, that's it. it's one of the brilliant things about art and drawing, isn't it, really? It's so personal. And you can never get it wrong. So there's, you lose that fear. Hi, Faith. So, as I've mentioned before about my anxiety and stuff like that, I have a lot of travel anxiety. Does anybody else suffer with that? Because I'm actually going on a really long trip um, this summer and it's about a seven hour drive. Now I'm stopping off in a hotel halfway um, for the night, you know, to break the journey up. But I'm still really worried because even um, even like holidays that take like two hours to get to the coast or something, even on those occasions, I'm just worried out of my mind for like two days that I'm going to feel sick on the way or, you know, I'm just not going to be able to handle it. Um, so I'd love some tips if anyone's got any tips for kind of um, getting through long journeys. I know in America, you guys, hang on, I've just got to try and spell this. I can't do it at the same time. Hello, cyanine green. Um, I know in America, a seven hour trip is nothing because you will go on massive long road trips, don't you? That last like five days. Um, but to me, to, to us in the UK, it's classed as a, a very long trip. CBD oil, never would have thought of that actually. I'm a bit scared though, I'm a bit scared of taking things. Not just that it's uh, cannabis oil, it's not that. Even if it's normal pills that you get from the doctors, I'm a bit scared of taking pills and uh, lotions and potions, you know, in case in case they make me feel all weird in my head and I, I feel out of control, because that's kind of part of the problem as well. This has got loads of pigment in it, this one particularly. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. I've got some anti-sickness tablets, um, but they do make me fall asleep. They knock me out completely, and then I've got a bit of a headache when I wake up. So it's kind of um, one of those catch-22 situations. I'll, I'll take one if I feel really, really sick and I'm having a panic attack because of it. But I don't usually like to try and take them, um, you know, often. Or if I'm going to be doing something that requires me to be awake. <clears throat> Meditation, music, crystals and prayer. Okay, trains, yeah, it's going to fly in, yeah, yeah, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible, I don't know what it is, it's like, um, I mean, why would we get travel anxiety, like, what's the point of it, what are we scared of, I don't know, it's just a, it's just a response, isn't it, it's a, the brain's response to what it perceives to be dangerous or whatever but mainly it's just the feeling that the, the worry that I'm going to feel really really sick or need the loo or you know my belly's going to go bad or something just just feel like or you know just a panic attack a general panic attack because I think when you have panic attacks the only place you want to be is at home namely on the bathroom floor just lying there um so when you're out and about and you you haven't got the comfort of being in your sanctuary at home um you know, I think, I don't know, I think it's it's the thought of it that brings it on. 
if that makes sense. Everyone's saying THC, CBD. I was thinking about going to the doctors and um, asking if they would do... Um, you know you know, if you go in for an MRI scan or something and you're claustrophobic and you want something to calm you down, like a little bit of a sedative, they give you like a Valium or something, don't they? You know, if you're going for that. I thought they might give me something like that. But then again, I am worried how that's going to... how I'm going to react with that because I've never had it before. So... I hate side effects, you know, I don't know, I'm just a lost cause really. <laughs> so this is dark sap green. I'm loving these greens so far guys, the um, the thalocyanine green is, is really nice. It's kind of like, let's just check, yeah it's kind of like a deeper beryl green that one, so if you were wanting to get that beautiful beryl green, I'd go for that one as well if you want a darker version. Yeah, that's good actually. The focus in the sensors. I've done that before. That does help. I've also got um, like an app on my phone that shows you. It's like a set of triangles, and the triangle like expands into a hexagon, and then it it goes down back into a triangle. And you're supposed to measure your breathing, your kind of um, your inhale and your exhale, and time it with that. So it kind of naturally just calms you down. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. That's quite a good idea, actually, Sabrina. I never, ever would have thought of that. I'm going to have to take, like, a... Oh, no, I'm not... No, not mushroom. <laughs> um, what can I take that I don't... Can I, what about, like, a lemon or something that's really, like, citrusy and makes you just... Whoop, that might work. This is... Oh, no, not another one. Dark thalocyanine green. I can't fit all this on. Thalo... Th I don't know how, how to spell it at this point. I don't know. Hello, cyanine green. No, I can't take the mushrooms. I'll I will be sick. I haven't. I can't teach you because the munchies. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought it wasn't supposed to give you any of those kind of symptoms that you would get with smoking weed or whatever. I thought it's like um, got none of that kind of bits in it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So even on a daily basis when I'm at home and I don't have to worry about travelling or anything, um, I still need something to distract me all day. That's why I, that's why I started colouring um, and diamond painting and all that other stuff. That is just a massive distraction method for me. So I'll look for Temple Balm. I've also looked at, um, what's it called? Bax Rescue Remedy. I don't know if that's any good. Dark Olive. Okay, so I don't need the THC then, just the CBD. I just love cereal anyway, and it's one of the worst things you can eat, isn't it? But it's one of my major food groups. Brown olive, 50%. I eat so much sugar, you know, it's not even funny. Like, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, I have my cereal, which is all sugar, you know, crunchy nut cornflakes, all sugar. And I have a decent sized bowl as well, I'm not a rabbit. And um, then I'll have whatever dinner I'm having, which is probably like pasta or pizza, which is like the worst things ever. And then I'll have like a family sized chocolate bar after that. Um, and then later on for tea, I'll have whatever I'm having for tea and then I'll have some more chocolate after that. And I might even have another bowl of cereal in, for, in the evening for my supper. Like, I don't think I could cope without sugar. I think I'd probably go on some sort of like 
withdrawal or something. Yeah, that's true, Danny. That's true. My husband has said we will stop at any time if needed. Even, you know, just to take in the scenery, take in, you know, just have you stretch your legs a little bit. This is olive brown. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to take the THC then by the sounds of it. So we're getting into like the more olivey ochre kind of colours now. Oh, April, that sounds like me on a normal day, what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't have to be pregnant to eat that. Green ochre. Oh, DM me in a bit, Suze. Yeah, the, the cannabis in America, it's everywhere, isn't it? Not like um, Amsterdam or whatever. Uh, you have like cafes and all sorts, don't you? It's literally just everyone smoking it over there. I always remember watching Deuce Bigelow, uh, the second one, that DVD, and he goes to uh, Amsterdam and uh, even the policeman is like smoking and eating the, eating the cake that's laced with weed and stuff. And that was the first time I ever knew that that happened. Um, raw sienna. I love these browns and ochres. I know brown isn't exactly a gorgeous colour or anything, but it's not, it's not everyone's first choice, but I love browns. So earthy and natural. I'm thinking about doing a whole coloured page with all sepia tones. I think that would be really nice. I'm always looking for ways to create pages that are different and unique and pop and they're limited and stuff like that. Oh, well done, Suze. I wish I could. I think I put on £6 yesterday. Um, yellow ochre. Yeah, they're thinking about doing that over here now, um, Sabrina, with the, the whole medical um, acceptance of it for certain conditions like epilepsy. Um, but I think from by the sounds of it, you've got to jump through many hoops to actually be able to receive it. So it's, it's certainly not something that's going to be handed out to anybody. This one is brown ochre. And we are going on to our last tray now, guys. So we're not going to be uh, long before we're done. So the last tray is skin tones, what looks like skin tones, and the reddish browns, the darker, cooler browns, and a few like putty tones as well. So that's interesting. And then we've got a couple of greys, but it doesn't look like there's many. So that's that's another thing. It doesn't look like there's many greys, so we'll see what we what it's like when we get there. Uh, Naples ochre. Love this colour. This is really light. Pickle, see you later. And then we've got light flesh 10%. So 
So maybe I'll try and do a skin tone with these, but I'm scared because I've never really done a skin tone properly with um, water soluble pencils. This is lovely and pigmented as well. That's really going to help as well that it's actually got enough pigment in there to do that coverage on the face. got apricot what time is it guys someone in the UK give me the time I literally could be five o'clock it could be ten o'clock i'm really i'm lost this one is anthraquinoid pink and i think that one is in the luminance as well because i recognize the weird name oh wow 20 to 8 i've not even had any tea yet I'm too busy making pancakes for the kids it's pancake day over here anthraquinoid pink this is a gorgeous colour and it's definitely the same as the one in the luminance so you could mix and match. This is violet pink. I know I ask this every time, but can you just tell me, is the video in HD? Because I'm looking at it on the iPad and it looks really blurry. But it could just be because I'm using the same internet connection to film it. This is a really nice colour as well. This is kind of like the um, nectar in the Prismas. So that would be a good one for skin, for sure. Thank you. Thanks for that. This is Burnt Sienna 50%. See, because I'm right in the back room in this porter cabin, sometimes I don't get a decent Wi-Fi signal. Uh, and my Wi-Fi is not great anyway, to be honest. I've been trying to watch Supernatural and it keeps buffering on me. Um, so I'm just hoping that you can all see it fine. <sighs> Terracotta. I need a Wi-Fi booster, that would be really good for this. This is Burnt Ochre. Can you see I'm getting really tired now, I'm going right out of the lines. <sighs> I'm such an old fart, now I know what time it is and it's nearly bedtime. <laughs> Got all tired. I'm loving this range, this whole section here, by the way. Gorgeous, some really good choices for skin tones there. This is cinnamon. So you can see how nicely they melt. They don't leave any of the original lines on there that you did with the pencil, which often a lot of cheap um, watercolour pencils do. 
I've got to say, just from this kind of short period of time that I've been using them, they are definitely excellent quality. So if you're worrying about spending that kind of money, definitely get your um, open stock first if you can, just to try them out, you know, and see your personal preference. But I can tell you that if you did go ahead and get the whole set, you would not be disappointed. <clears throat> this is Russet. Gorgeous colour this one as well. You've got to, Sammy. Honestly, you will not regret it. Get that barrel green because everyone's loving that. I'm loving that. There's a few that are just they literally like like using neo colours. This one is brown. sit on my pencil, uh, pencil, water brush. Uh, raw umber. Okay, so we're over halfway of the bottom layer now, so we're nearly done. This is Castle Earth. C A S S E L Earth. This is a really nice dark oaky brown. If that makes sense. <laughs> So umber's got a lot of green in it, hasn't it? I never really noticed that before. This is French Grey. So I'm actually quite surprised they've included French Greys in here. I don't know if this is the only one. I'll have to wait and see. Slate grey. We've got sepia at 50%. The stickles are amazing and I've got Sammy to thank for that because she introduced me to stickles. Fantastic. Sometimes I forget to use them, you know. I need to use them more. It's like the Neos. When I use them, I wonder why I don't use them more, but it's just because I forget. 
this is dark flesh 50%. So we had light flesh 50% and now we've got dark flesh. And we've got sepia 10%. That's a really nice colour actually. If I didn't know better, I'd think it was a putty beige or maybe even a light French grey. It's a really nice colour. Okay, so we've got steel grey. Wouldn't it be nice if they all fit on this page and I don't have to start a new one? <laughs> I need a new swatch book anyway. Now then, this one's Payne's Grey. I'm going to have to turn over the page. I hate colouring at the top of a page or at the edge. two blacks so we've got ivory black you often get two blacks in pencil sets nowadays don't you two different kinds of black lamp black or what have you it's interesting to see what the difference is between them What's happening with Jen? Someone fill me in. This is noir. So this should be the dark, dark black. Maybe. Oh no. Oh God. That is so sad. She must be absolutely gutted. I'll have to go over and pop her a message in a bit. I'm going right out the lines with this. But yeah, I think the um, the ivory black is kind of a brownish black. It's not really true black. Oh, we're, we're at the end. That's it. We've just got our two Technolo pencils now. So this one's a HB. Just normal pencil. And 3B. Mm. So there we go. We've done all of the layers of pencils. I think, is there 72 in the whole set? I don't know where my lid's gone. Um, what did you think of all of the colours? Let me know. I think that they're absolutely beautiful, beautiful pencils. And if you don't have them already and you've been wondering whether you should get them or not, I'm hoping that this video is going to sway you because honestly, until you've actually used them, you can't really appreciate how thick they are and how pigmented they are. Um, so a few favourites, we've got the beryl green. These blues here are absolutely packed with pigment. Uh, the permanent blue, the thallocyanine blue, the ice blue, um, the night blue as well. Um, I particularly love these really light colours. You've got the ultramarine violet and the cobalt blue 5%. So it's just a tiny tint of that blue. Um, 
Reds and oranges are okay, but I don't think there's enough of them. I think there's tons and tons of greens to work with. So if you do do a lot of landscapes and things like that, you'll like it. There's loads of browns as well. So again, earthy tones, you'll like it. Very similar to the luminance. Very heavy on the greens, the earthy browns. Um, but you don't have many greys. There's not many greys. That's the only thing I have to say. Um, you've really only got one, two, three greys, actual true greys um, in here. So that's probably where it slips up a little bit. But as for quality, the production, the packaging, absolutely spot on. The level of pigment used, exactly as Sammy says, they are scrunchious pencils. So honestly, get yourself a couple of single pencils first. Do not go out and run out and buy this entire set unless you're absolutely sure that you're going to love them. I'm sure you will, but not everyone's the same. So please go and get yourself a few singles. Have a go. Let me know what you think. Um, and you know just drop me a comment down here on the comments box list thing or you can get me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and just let me know what you think because I'm always eager to know how you guys find all of these things um, personally you know that I'm showing you on here so thank you so so much for joining me I'm gonna go and get a little bit to eat now for supper um, and get myself to bed because I'm an old lady who needs to get to bed at nine o'clock because uh, <laughs> I'm just too knackered to stay up any later than that and I'm only 30 years old so what does that tell you um, but again thank you for keeping me company and joining me on this stream I hope you've enjoyed it we've had a nice good chat yet again I've managed to speak to some lovely people as usual my favourite part of this whole streaming experience um, so have a fantastic rest of your week and um, 